Okay, guys. Hi, welcome to our virtual bariatric meetup. My name is April Williams. I'm the face behind the Actively April Instagram page. Uh, I'm also the West piece to the East to West. Uh, Jason, who is the East piece, is here joining us as well. You can see him waving there. We are so excited to dive into our topic today, uh, and it's all about the changes that we have to go through post weight loss surgery to find success afterwards. Because we all know that can be a struggle. We all know people who have gone through bariatric surgery and are not successful. So our goal today is to talk about what we need to do to find success after weight loss surgery. Uh, so we've already gone through our introductions. Thank you so much you guys for doing that. Um, I always share my, my vision and my mission just so we're all on the same page. So uh, my whole goal with why I started my Instagram page and why Jason and I started East to West is that we want to destigmatize weight loss surgery in our community. We want to grow a community of and for bariatric patients where we can support and learn from each other. And we just want to share things, ideas, uh, things that add value to our life for our community. So it's the only reason why this exists. Uh, this isn't about sales, marketing, selling, making money, none of that. It's just about community. So please uh, assume best intent. What we share remains in this group. Uh, obviously, we're recording this today because the information is so valuable, but we do like to keep things as confidential as we can. And of course, no sales. That's not what we're about and nothing inappropriate. So if there's anything in the background that's going on, anything that's shared or said, I'll just kick you out and we'll call it good. But I think everybody is, is, is okay with that. Okay, so here's our very packed agenda for today. Uh, so we're gonna start by talking about changes, how and why we change after bariatric surgery. Then we're gonna talk about some straight hardcore numbers. So what are my chances of relapse? What does that mean? Um, what do I need to do to be successful after surgery? And then we're really gonna talk about lasting change. How do I make these lasting changes in my life so that I can find success after surgery? And then we're gonna spend some time for reflection. So we're all gonna have a moment to think about, okay, what is our old identity? What do we want our new identity to be? And how do I, how do I get there? And then we're just going to wrap up kind of how we, as we always do, uh, share some, some wise words, uh, reflect on the process today, and then pl plan for our next one. So I'm just going to dive right in if you guys are good with that. Uh, so Wendy is not here today yet, but this is a picture of Wendy. She's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, she's a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, she's nationally certified and she's just became certified for national distance counseling. So if you are looking for somebody to maybe help you in the transition, I cannot recommend her uh, recommend her more and her contact information I'll share uh, at the end of it. The wonderful thing about Wendy is that not only is she a specialist in bariatric patients, she herself is a bariatric patient. So it's so wonderful to be able to share with her things that I have been going through and she can relate because she has been through the exact same thing herself. And uh, I absolutely, her story of how she came to have bariatric surgery is wonderful. We all, uh, I think, can see ourselves and hear ourselves in her own story. So just a fantastic, fantastic resource. So everything that shared today is things that I have learned from Wendy and then things that I have learned on my own and verified with Wendy. So uh, this is not information that I'm just like pulling out of my hat. This is, this is the work that I have done, the work that I continue to do to be uh, successful uh, with my uh, bariatric recovery. Wendy also joined us uh, on our second podcast episode. So if you guys have not listened to that yet, I highly recommend you do. We've had some phenomenal feedback. The information that Wendy shared is all what today is about. Uh, it's just phenomenal. So uh, uh, she is a fantastic resource and I absolutely recommend that, that you reach out uh, to her. So changes after bariatric surgery, right? We all know that we're gonna go through them. If we haven't been through surgery yet, we're anticipating what we're gonna go through. And if we have been through surgery, we know the, the changes that, that we have been through. Really, they fall into three categories, physical changes, emotional changes, and mental changes, right? So after surgery, everything about us physically basically changes. Everything from like our ring sizes to our shoe sizes, our hair, our skin, changes, our tastes change, right? We're in physical pain uh, for, for a short time. Just everything changes. Things that we never thought would change all of a sudden look different. And that uh, that's odd, right? Because some of us have lost weight before, but we've never actually lived consistently at this, at this new lower weight. And um, yeah, those physical changes require that, that we make some, some changes in our lives. Uh, emotional changes are just huge, right? The physical pain keeps us from dealing with our emotions like we used to. So I'm assuming 
most of us or all of us have used food as a crutch when we were physically in pain, when we were emotionally struggling, when we were experiencing some mental mental trauma, right? We, we turn to food and all of a sudden after surgery, you very quickly realize, oh shit, I can't do that anymore. And that is a huge mental gymnastics move that we are asking ourselves to do as we are trying to recover from surgery. Um, our hormones change. We've gone through major surgery. So men and women, everything is out of whack, right? Your whole body is just experiencing this massive change and nothing is making sense. The brain and the body are no longer communicating as they used to. It's just right? It, it's a big deal. And uh, for me, especially, it was a breakup with food, right? Food was my number one relationship in my life. And I bro had to break up with it. And I didn't want to really, but I, I was forced to. So just some, some huge emotional uh, struggles and changes, right? And then those mental changes, did I make the right decision? My relationships are going to change with people, even though they're rock solid to start with, everything needs to kind of go through this, this adjustment period. And that's, that's huge uh, for us. Um, my biggest discovery and really what Wendy and I have done a lot of talking about recently is that I didn't, I don't know how to live at, at a new low weight. I just don't. Uh, and that is a huge mental b hurdle that I'm trying to overcome. Uh, and it's real difficult because everything that I used to know, cannot or does not apply to my new life moving forward. And that's, that's brutal. Um, right. And what I also experienced is that after surgery, I had this massive amount of extra mental space. Now, uh, 90% of my day before surgery was dedicated to food. It was thinking about food. It was preparing food. It was enjoying food. It was planning. It was prepping. It was food. And all of a sudden after surgery, all of that time is now available for other things because I don't have a desire or a need, or I just can't use all of that space to think about food. So now you've got 90% of your mental capacity to go, hmm, now I have all of these things to think about. And that is, right, that, that is brutal. So this extra mental space can be good, but it can also be a bad thing because now you're left thinking, well, now what, right? So all kinds of changes to anticipate after surgery, things that you would never think of oh my gosh, now, now I'm dealing with them, right? So why do these changes occur, right? Well, obviously the, the physical changes are because we have physically altered our, ourselves. We physical, we've altered our body. And the recovery from major surgery requires that, that we live our physical lives differently. You know, things that were, we once took for granted are now a monumental task because we are recovering, right? And it is no joke. You really do need 30 to 60 days after surgery to recover. So all of a sudden doing laundry or just showering or using the restroom is now this huge challenge because you kind of have to relearn to do things differently for a while. So that's, that, that's a big deal. Um, we have altered or removed a part of our physical self. That's huge. The, one of my first sessions with Wendy was she was asking about the work that I had done to like connect with my body and make sure that it was prepared to like lose something. And I thought she was batshit crazy. I mean, I was like, what are you talking about? Like uh, this and this do not speak, right? This controls this and this gets me around. And you know, it was a comical moment, but it is very true. We, we have altered our body in a way we've either taken something out, we've redone the plumbing, we've done some major changes to our physical self. And that is a huge deal that we just don't, I think, give, give ourselves an, enough credit for. Um, right. And just all of these changes to our movement lead to these emotional and mental hurdles that we just have to have to overcome, right. These emotional causes. If you have used food as a coping mechanism before surgery, that Avenue of relief is no longer available to you. And that is devastating. Absolutely devastating. Uh, and mind you, all of these things are going on at the same time. So it's not like you have the luxury of dealing with the physical and then you can move on to the emotional and then you can move on to the mental. No, you're gonna get hit by three Mack trucks at one time and you have to figure out how you're going to deal with this. And it is a ton of work. I always tell people this is, I have never worked so hard in my entire life, but this is, this is what is required to, to live um, you know, to be successful after bariatric surgery. Um, I just think you're just not prepared for it. And um, which we'll talk about a little bit as, as we get into this, but you just, 
I think we, we, we've always known that, food, that this food issue or our struggle with our weight is the monumental task of our lives. And as we're gonna learn later, you only have about 20% of your brain capacity to deal with that struggle. And most days you just, phys you just flat out do not have the strength to battle that. Some days you do, and some days you're successful. But I think the reason that weight loss surgery is so powerful is it allows, it gives you a tool to use that 20% with. It, it gives you a little bit of a superhuman power that you can use to battle all of those things that you've been battling. Because I think the real struggle is you think after surgery, oh, well, surgery is going to fix it. It's going to be totally fine. And then you kind of recover and you realize, oh, uh, surgery isn't actually going to fix this. Surgery did, did not do anything up here. And my issue is here. But the power of weight loss surgery is it gives you a tool that you can use to battle this. And it's a tool that you need to be successful. Because without this tool, you, you just do not have the capacity or the strength to do it on your own. And that's why surgery is so powerful. That, that, is, that is what gives us the, the thing that we need to, to finally conquer that, that issue that, that we have been battling with our, our entire lives. So um, that food addiction, that super highway, uh, that's probably ingrained in all of us, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we've recognized it or not, it is absolutely there. And when you have to recognize that and deal with that head on, oh man, that is a, that, that's a powerful, powerfully exhausting uh, moment of recognition. And man, what, what a task that we have to undertake to, to, to become successful. So I think that, well, like when Kelly, when you were talking about how, you know, I'm to this point now and I realize, oh my gosh, you know, I, I'm at this point where I've never lived below this weight. It, it's, it's terrifying because all you know is what you did, what you have done before. And you very quickly realize, okay, what I did before to get to this low weight is not what is going to help me be successful at this new low weight. You truly need a new playbook to move forward and to be successful. And that is what today is, is really all about. How, how are we going to do that? How are we going to learn to live our lives at a new low weight and do so successfully and in a way that's healthy, right? Because we can all figure it out, but we could do it in really unhealthy ways. And our whole point of going through this surgery is that we can finally live our lives at a healthy weight and we can live there for the rest of our lives. That's the goal. And to do so in a way that doesn't end up killing us again. So um, yeah, all kinds of all kinds of good stuff. So is this uh, making sense? Do you resonate with this? Is this something that you, you know, you 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 agree with that you've experienced? Yes, I I agree that it is because um, I've hit a lot of the mental and the emotional bumps and actually I have lived at a much lighter weight so it's like being gone on this long trip with you know my obesity and returning back to what I knew but now I'm older so things are a lot different mentally and emotionally yes yep it really does require uh it requires a new playbook it absolutely requires a new playbook and what I think was what was scary for me before surgery and, and was part of the reason that I waited so long to have it done is that, you know, I really, I liked who I was. I liked who I, who I am and I didn't want to become a new person. And um, what I didn't realize is that I do have to become a new person. I am becoming a new person, but the seed remains the same. So my very inner person, my very inner core, my very inner soul, who I actually am as a person is not changing that's always gonna, going to be the same. So that's wonderful. But the shell, everything else has to change. Absolutely everything else. And it takes a very long time for that to change. And that can be the devastating part of that, which is why today is hopefully gonna be so powerful for all of us. So The devastating thing that I learned from Wendy, the most devastating thing that I learned from Wendy is that I have to work on this for five years, five years. That's how long it's going to take me to truly change my 
life and to create new habits that stick that will allow me to be successful after weight loss surgery. So if you guys kind of look at that second bullet there, relapse stats, we have a 50% chance of relapsing and regaining our weight two years after surgery. 50%. That is a huge number. And that is a massive amount of time, right? So when I first saw that number, I was like, okay, you have got to be kidding me. I am so exhausted already from battling my food. Now you're telling me that in two years out from surgery, I still have a 50% chance of regaining. And then really I have to, I have to get five years out before I'm kind of in the safe zone. My God, you gotta be kidding me, right? I've already, I've already fought for 38 years and now you're telling me I, I, uh, I, I have to keep going, right? Oh, can you guys not see? Can you guys see my screen? No. Oh my I gosh. Can't. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so sorry. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes way more sense. Okay. Uh, so the really good news, this, all this information is available to you 24-7. Um, There's a link to this. It's actually in my bio and Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram page, Actively April, or you go to East to West Weight Loss Surgery, if you click the link in our bio, it's going to take you to this. So you have access to this 24-7. And I highly recommend that, that you do check it out if you, if you would like to dive deeper or obviously see see what the heck I'm, I'm supposed to be talking about. I'm so sorry, you guys, that, that is, that's my bad. Um, so now, now we're all looking at the, at the same thing, right? So relapse. So when we talk about relapse, relapse is when you do something consistently with or without thinking, right? So if you are just finding that you are doing something that you are aware is not a part of the plan or that, you know, is something that you used to do before surgery, you are in relapse. So you're, you're doing it consistently. There, there is, we do slip. Everybody slips. Everybody makes a mistake uh, along, along the way. And I shared this story with a lot of people and I shared it with Wendy to kind of help me understand what a slip was. I'm really not a big drinker. Uh, I used to be, and I'm not anymore. And uh, we had just got moved into our new house and I was, I was stressed. I was going through a whole lot of changes. I was trying to deal with all this mental, mental stuff. And I was at the grocery store one day and I saw uh, a beer, a new beer that was produced by a local brewery. And it was like tropical or peach or something like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy that. I'm going to try that. And I really don't like beer. That's just not, not my thing. So I brought it home. I unpacked my groceries. I grabbed a can. I cracked it and I sat down on the couch and I, you know, was sipping on this beer and I was going through my phone. And I remember my husband looked down from the railing or came in the house or something. And he was like, Hey, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just looking on my phone. He's like, Oh, what are you drinking? And I was like, Oh, it's this new, you know, beer from Silver City Brewery. And he was like, Huh, that's weird. You don't drink. And I was like, Fuck you, you know, like I can do whatever I want, you know. I mean, but that one comment led me to recognize, oh, this is not good. I, I am, I'm trying to deal with my emotional state. I'm trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to numb myself out so I don't have to think of things and I'm doing so by drinking. That is not good. That, that, is, not, that is not good, right? I enjoy wine, I, I enjoy drinking every now and then, but I, I like to do so socially. Right. And there's a difference between doing it socially and having fun and doing it because I'm trying to not think about things or doing it because I'm trying to numb out doing, I'm doing it because that's my old addiction highway kicking in. Right. So that's a slip. And I, and I, I really haven't done that since then. Now, if I was doing that consistently, I would be in relapse. I would be back on my old super highway. I would be back to my old ways and I would be regaining my weight. So the other really powerful stat that Wendy shared with me is that women and men will relapse in two different ways, right? Women will relapse either, if, if you're not going to relapse with food, it's going to be with alcohol or shopping. And both of those will lead you to weight regain. I mean, drinking, obviously you're drinking your calories, but shopping, you're going to spend all your money, you're going to be depressed, and then you're going to go back to eating, right? So that's how, that's how that cycle works. With men, it's either alcohol or it's sex or porn addiction. So the exact same thing. I'm either going to drink my calories back or I'm going to uh, indulge in, in, in sex or pornography. That's going to create my shame cycle. And then I'm going to return to eating. So to know that no matter how hard we work, we are all going to attempt to 
fill the void or to avoid our feelings or to get out of an uncomfortable situation by doing something, that is our key to know, oh crap, I'm going down, I'm going down my old pathways, right? That, that is the, that, that is the trigger. Some of us experience it. Some of us don't. It's just a, right. It's like a, a, who knows what the magic number is, but to know that we are all going to try to go back to our old ways is powerful for us because we can use that tool as we are defining and refining who we want to be as individuals as we move on from, from our bariatric surgery, right? So to know that we have a 50% chance of relapse and regain two years out and then a 15% chance is super powerful for us. We can use those numbers as a tool. So when I look at those numbers, I think, okay, I have to work extremely hard my first two years after weight loss surgery. And then from years two to five, I have to be diligent. I have to be on top of myself. I have to check myself. I have to work hard. I need to check in with my identity. I need to track. I need to do all of the things that not only my surgeon has said, but all of the things that I've learned to be a successful individual for five years after surgery. That's a long, long time. And that can be, uh, that can be brutal. Oh, Wendy's joining us. Perfect timing as well. Wendy, hello, welcome. We're just talking about, uh, about the, the change stats. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for arriving late. I, I had a meeting that went over and I couldn't jump out of it. So. Nope. Yeah. Absolutely. Not, not a big deal at all. Uh, would, would you introduce yourself a little bit to the group? To, we, I, I gave a little bit of an intro bef uh, about you before, uh, but before we joined, but if, will you just tell them who you are, what you're all about, and maybe a little bit of your own bariatric story? Yes, uh, thanks for asking. Um, I'm Wendy Rawlings. I am a, a mental health counselor and have had um, a bariatric bypass in 2005. And, and now I counsel people who are on the same journey that I've been on. She is an absolute phenomenal resource, you guys. I can't I can't tell you much. And what I very much appreciate about Wendy is that Wendy allows me to get mad and angry and swear and, you know, bitch and moan. And she just kind of smiles and she acknowledges my, my feeling. And then she very quickly redirects me to, okay, well, but how, how can you, how can you do this differently? You're on to me, April. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so very much. So Wendy, what we're doing right now, we're, you can see the slide. We're really just talking about relapse. We're talking about the difference okay. between a relapse and a slip. And they were talking about those uh, stats. And I just shared with them how devastated I was when I first learned those numbers, yeah. that how I have grown to see these as a touchstone for, for myself. If I know these are my chances of mm -hmm. relapsing, of not being successful, then anytime something pops up in my life or in my world, I can take a pause and I can go, okay, wait a minute, is this a slip? Am I moving into relapse? How, how is this right how is this not serving me mo moving forward mm -hmm. yeah some, something that helped me too when I was there was thinking you know two years is a long time five years is even longer but I'm I'm going to be doing those five years anyway it's it's not like I'm not going to do those five years it's how am I going to do those five years I know I'm going to be doing them uh what what are my choices going to be um because I, I think we've all had the experience of, wow, why didn't I start this earlier? <laughs> I, if I had started this earlier, I'd have been at this what this other point by now. And so I just used that to, to go, yeah, so in five years, I'll be really glad I'm making this decision now. And it seems like a long-term thing, but after a while, it gets easier. It does. And the other thing that, that Wendy really uh, shared with me that was a huge help is that our, our biggest bang for the buck, our window of opportunity to make these lasting changes are months nine through 18, right? Because around month nine, we really start to feel good. We, we've pretty much recovered. Life is getting back to normal. And all of a sudden we realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm doing some of my old behaviors or I'm doing some of those old things uh, because I'm feeling well enough now. Right? So when my life gets stressed or when I get angry, when something happens, my brain 
which I've already wired for my old life, right? So, so that super high way of, oh, when I get stressed, I eat. Or when I get stressed, I do these things. It's going to kick in because now I'm feeling normal again. So my brain and my body thinks, oh, well, everything's back to normal. Now we're going to go back to those old pathways in my brain that have been well established. And if I do not pause, if I don't check myself, and if I don't do the work of getting off of that old highway, and creating a new highway, a new pathway in my brain that is taking me on the healthy part of my journey, that I'm not going to be successful. And I think that's why so many people regain their weight is because they get to this point in their life and they go, oh, wait a minute, this is the easier pathway, right? And it's just so subconscious. You don't even do it consciously because you've done it for so long. It is habit, it is routine. Your brain doesn't need to spend any time thinking about what you're gonna do because it's automated, right? And if we don't do the work of the stop, the pause, if we don't do the work of identifying, okay, who do I want to be? What is my new identity? And what do I have to do to live that identity? If we don't do that hard work, then the surgery is not going to matter because we're going to let our brain go back to those old automated habits. We're just going to do what we used to do. And before we know it, we're going to be right back to where we started. And that is devastating. So that is the whole point of today. That's the whole goal. And really, I think that is our life's work for the next five years is creating our new identity, identifying what that is what do we need to do to be living that identity and then clearly tracking those things that we're doing every day to live that identity that's the only way that we are going to make those new pathways in our brain that's the only way that we're going to take the the old pathways offline so to speak and bring online those new healthy pathways but it's exhausting because you only have 80 percent of your brain to you you only have 20 percent of your brain to do that work in so I'm trying to get over here to the next slide. Um, right, 80% of our brain is dedicated to the thinking in the moment, right? So what that means is that your brain is always trying to go to what has been automated for you. Your brain is gonna go to the path of least resistance. That's why it can be so hard to change a habit, right? If 80% of your brain is always looking to automate, you're really kind of looking at, okay, well, I've got 20% to try to get off this old pathway and create this new pathway. That is a, that's a lot of work. That is a monumental task. Uh, and it absolutely can be done. And, and how we do it is kind of what you see here on the screen. There are changes that we need to make in our life to, to make the change that we, that we want to make. Uh, Wendy shared this with us um, just a couple of weeks ago, and it's been a really powerful tool that, that we've kind of used and, and we've learned to learn to use to help us make the changes that we need. So Wendy, do you want to kind of speak, speak to this, speak to your graphic? Oh, sure. Do you want me to just go through the stages a little bit? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Sure. Okay. So the first stage is pre-contemplation, and that is not even knowing that you have a have an issue. And this could be any issue, but we'll we'll um, apply it to weight loss. And I'll I'll kind of use myself as an example because I know that the one the best. So pre-contemplation is knowing that I'm a little overweight, um, but not really knowing how much or how it's affecting me or wanting to look at it. And then contemplation is, oh my goodness, I do have a problem. I, I admit it, but I'm not ready to do anything about it yet because it sounds hard. So for me, I moved from pre-contemplation to contemplation when I saw a picture of me holding a little baby and she just took up like a teeny bit of my shoulder. Um, and I thought, who? I didn't even know it was me in the picture. I said to my sister, it was her, it was her granddaughter, and I said, Peggy, who, who is that baby? And she's, or who is that person holding the baby? And she said, well, that's you. And I, I. I really looked close and I recognized the outfit, but I didn't recognize myself. Um, so I, that moved me right into contemplation. And then um, from contemplation, I moved to our, the next step is preparation. And that is creating your plan, deciding what's going to have to change. What can you keep the same? How can you make the change and make it be effective? Because we don't want to go back and forth. We've done that enough times. So how can I make lasting change? It usually requires some research, um, talking to other people, going to the doctor, just doing whatever your best way is to to plan for uh, your best result. And then once you plan for it, then you take action. And 
um, in the case of bariatric surgery, of course, the surgery is an action, but also trying different um, types of eating plans, uh, trying different types of proteins. And if you had gastric bypass, you know that taste buds change after surgery, so all bets are off on that. Um, but there's, there's just a lot of things you can try in the planning stages and kind of experiment with action, but don't expect to stay in action for very long. You just put your toe in the water and then you pull it out. But then when you're ready, when you got your ducks in line, or even if you don't have your ducks in line, and, and when I had the surgery, I thought I had my ducks in line until I realized I didn't, but I did it anyway. And then you, you go into action. And then um, action is just doing your plan and doing the best you can with your plan, um, tweaking it when you need to. If it doesn't work, you say to yourself, what went wrong? What am I gonna do next time to make sure it, it doesn't go wrong again? And then um, maintenance is, once you've done it for a certain amount of time, it's just maintaining. It's, it's once the brain gets rewired and that start, rewiring starts in action, then maintenance is maintaining the wiring and moving it from that 80% part of your brain into that 20% part of your brain area. So that's what maintenance is. And the skills are different in maintenance than they are in the, in the first four. Um, so that's basically what it is. And it's not moving, you don't, it's, it's like if you've moved up to the next step, you, it's not like you can't drop down to a different step. I've, I've gone all the way from, from action to almost pre-contemplation the same day. And I, I would have never thought that was possible, but you wanna be really aware of where you are on the chart and then there's some questions you can ask yourself that move you to the next, um, the next stage or keep you in the stage that you want to be in. And those questions are on my website. If I, I don't know if, if uh, April's introduced that to you or not. No, but I will. Um, yeah, they're there if you want to, if you want to take a look. So um, anything else you want me to say about it, April? No, I, I think what, what was really powerful for me with this graphic is well, really a couple of things. The skills that are needed in the first four steps, so pre-contemplation all the way up to action, are different than the skills that you're gonna need in maintenance. So it's important to know that what got you to action is fantastic. What's going to help you maintain is going to be different. And knowing that you're gonna kind of need a different set of skills in those two areas can be really powerful. And what has very much helped me is two of my favorite people on, on the internet, that they're called the minimalists. It's, um, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. They, they got a great pod podcast. They, they've got a whole minimalist universe. But the most powerful thing I ever heard them say was that you have to make your own recipe for life or your own recipe for whatever you're trying to tackle. And what's powerful about that is that in the preparation stage and even in the action stage, I have looked at a bunch of people's recipes. I have seen what other people have done and I have pulled pieces from what other people have done, and I have made my own recipe. And then I, I, I try that recipe in action. And if that recipe doesn't work, then I make some tweaks along the way. And I keep tweaking it until something sticks, until it makes sense, until I can do it with less effort than some other things that I've tried. So once I've figured out my recipe, I've got it. I, I am armed with it. This is, this is what's gonna work. Then I move to maintenance. Then it's all about, okay, how do I maintain this recipe or how do I bake this? How do I make this recipe every single time so that it's coming out consistently the same way? It's been a super powerful tool for me because I used to be a person that was like, oh no, I'm doing Atkins. So I'm only doing this. I'm not looking at anything else. And then it was, well, I'm only doing Weight Watchers. I'm not looking at anything else. or I'm only doing this. That wasn't helpful for me because that recipe, that finite recipe, didn't have all of the pieces in it that I needed. And it really hindered me. And now that I've learned that I have the freedom to build my own recipe by taking pieces from everybody, it has been so powerful because I have created systems and routines and habits that I can maintain. And I have been maintaining for months now. And the results have been phenomenal. But to know that the skills that it took me to get to action are not the skills that I need to maintenance, powerful. I can take other people's recipe, make my own, powerful. And I can go in all of these stages in one day, that's okay. I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board. And every time something else crops up in my life and I get a little red flag and I think, uh-oh, is this an issue? I can go to these stages. 
right? I can be in pre, pre contemplation. Oh, well, this isn't an issue. No, it, it, it's not. And then something tells me mm, this is an issue. Okay, now I'm in contemplation. Now I'm really trying to figure out what is this. And if I realize this is something, okay, I need to make a plan and then I need to try my recipe and I need to keep trying, trying, trying until something sticks. Awesome. I've got it. How the heck am I going to maintain it? It's a super powerful visual actionable tool that we can use no matter what type of learner you are, right? You can use this to help you build those healthy habits to create that new identity that is going to allow you to be successful after weight loss surgery. This is why habits and routines are so important because if we can create these healthy habits, these healthy routines, and we can stick to them every day or every week consistently for years, that new pathway is going to be our automatic pathway. So then our brain can dump off that activity, it can automate it, and we've freed up more of our brain capacity. We've freed up that 80% to focus on the here and now, things that are really important to us. It's just the effort that it takes to switch from the old pathway to the new pathway is the work. That is the work. And it takes focus, concentrated, you know, meaningful effort almost every, every moment to get it done, which is exhausting, which is why people fail. Because we already know. We know it's exhausting. We've been there. We've done that. We have tried to lose this weight. It's exhausting. But now that we have this tool that gives us a little boost in our superpower, we have the ability. We can make these changes now. We can be successful after surgery. Just a powerful, wonderful place to be at. It's going to be work, but, but we absolutely can, can get it done. So Wendy and I often talk about uh, this book and this author because it absolutely ties into everything that we're talking about today. The book is called Atomic Habits. It's by a gentleman named James Clear. And when I read this book and then after working with Wendy, it finally clicked in my brain for me, right? I've always been trying to change my routines and habits by focusing on the outcome. I never once looked at, well, why do I want to make those changes? Or are those changes aligned to who I really want to be? And they never were. Because my identity before surgery was kind of a sham. I worked really hard to show the world that, no, I'm, I'm an active person. No, I, I eat healthy. No, I'm, you know, I'm doing everything right. Even though that wasn't really my true identity. Right? I was an addict, I was addicted to food, but I didn't want the world to know that. So I worked really hard at my fake identity and pushing out that fake identity, all the while knowing on the inside, that's not necessarily my true identity, right? My true identity is, is you know, I, I'm ashamed of where I'm at. Uh, my true identity is, is almost a mystery because I've worked so hard to, to fake it until I make it that now all of a sudden I've realized, well, even faking it didn't do it for me, right? I've made it and yet I'm still struggling with this. Just crushing, absolutely crushing. Um, so for me to realize that I really do have to become a different person after weight loss surgery was devastating. But when I realized that who I am as a person, my, my very internal core seed does not have to change, nor should it change, right? I'm a good person, I know what I value, that doesn't need to change. But I need to start showing the world my true identity. And I need to create a new identity that helps me live life as a healthy person. And then I need to build my habits and my, and my routines around that identity. So I have to start with my core and I have to work my way out because that's the only way that lasting change happens. If we try to make new habits and routines that are not aligned to our identity, they're not going to stick. They're just not, because w w why would you be trying to do something that never equates to, to its, itself? You know that it doesn't equate, so you're just not gonna do it. But if you start with, okay, who am I? Who do I want to be? What is it going to take to, to be that person? And then you just plan from, you plan from the outside, or you, know, you plan from the inside out, that's where the lasting change comes. If your actions align with your identity, you will continue to do those things. That's, that, that's the premise. And that's really what, what James Clear talks about.
right? Our old self, our old identity does not know how to live life as a thinner person. We just don't. We have to acknowledge that. We have to recognize that. And then we have to start from ground zero, okay? What, what, what was my identity before surgery? Because clearly that, that, that wasn't the identity that's going to allow me to live as a healthy person. What do I want my identity to be now? And then how am I going to carry that identity forward in, in the future? So as James says in his book, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, you, you only have to do two things. Well, it turns out the, those two things are, you know, they're, they're pretty monumental. So if you guys can see this graphic on the screen, right? This is just from James Clear, Clear's book. So identity is at the center. From our identity, we have to come up with our processes. So how, how are we going to, how are we going to live this identity? And then the very outer layer is the outcome, right? And if you focus on identity and processes, the outcome is going to come without any effort. Right. So it's almost like you don't really need to worry about the outcome because it's going to be what you have worked so hard to create. So the more tied that we are to our identity, the more difficult it can be to change it. That's why it's important to kind of recognize, okay, what was my old identity? Because clearly that's not what is going to help me get to where I, where I need to go. So I really need to focus on coming up with a new, with a new identity. And this is going to be hard because we've lived with our old identity for for our, our entire adult lives. We're really attached to that identity. And that's really hard to let that go. Uh, but if we can get to the point where we're okay with letting it go, we're okay with developing this new identity and we're building our lives around this new identity, really wonderful things are going to happen for us. So if you try to create these new habits that don't align to your new identity, they're just not going to last. And the more pride that we have in our identity, the more motivated we are going to be to maintain those new habits. This, is, this part is really hard for me because I've faked my identity for so long. I'm a little bit ashamed to tell the world like, hey, I kind of wasn't being truthful. Sorry about it. That's really hard for me. But I have to acknowledge that and I have to, to move on and I just have to say, okay, this is who I am and this is how I'm living this identity. This is who I'm working to be. And... Uh, that helps me stay motivated to create that new identity because that is truly what I want out of life. I don't want my old life. I just don't. It wasn't healthy. It wasn't helpful. It got me nowhere. It got me absolutely nowhere, right? I, I accomplished everything I ever wanted to accomplish in life by like 35. And I'm sitting on the mountaintop going, well, this isn't what I thought it would be, right? I think we've all kind of been there. So I have to change, I have to change what I've been doing. So in his book, that quote was so powerful. Progress requires unlearning. Becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and expand your identity. I couldn't agree more. It ties in with what I've learned from the minimalist, right? I have to build my own recipe. I have to unlearn old, old habits. I have to relearn new habits. I have to keep trying until something sticks and makes sense. And then I have to move forward, move forward from there. So I've done, yeah, I've done a ton of talking. I should definitely. Oh, no, no. I just, I just wanted to, to ask if I, I have a, it's ironic. Um, James Clear and I have the same model of change. And of course we didn't arrive at it together because I don't know the man. I just read his book and really like it, but I had arrived at the very same model um, independently, but I've, I've, um, I've expressed it a little bit differently than he has. Can I maybe share that? Would that be all right? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to share my screen if that's okay, because I, oh, but you have to not share your screen. I'll just, I, I can just tell you what it is, if that's all right. Is, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, so, um, I use the same three circles and in the middle, I call uh, where, what he calls identity. I call that our belief system. And then the processes are, is our code of living and the outcome is the behavior. And when we, in the past, when we've tried to change, we've started on the outside in. We started with the behavior. I'm only going to eat 800 calories. So that's a behavior. Um, instead of starting with the, the belief, why, what do, what do I want to change? Who do I believe I am or what, who do I want to be? What's my belief about myself or what's my belief about my relationship with food or what's my belief about whatever that thing is, which is, is James Clear's word for identity. So if we can change our belief and our identity, then we change our code of living. 
and then we change our behavior. And that, that change happens so much quicker when we go from the inside out. Um, we've been taught to go from the outside in, and we just want to focus it's so much faster if we can go from the inside out. So that's all I have to say. Yes, absolutely. Is any of this, is this resonating with you? Is this making sense? Is, are, are, you, are, are you seeing glimmers of hope in this information? So I just wanted to say um, the identity thing is something that's really kind of striking me right now because I had this surgery really young. So I was 23 and um, from the time I can remember, I was the fat friend in my friend group. Um, it's just, <laughs> that's the way it was. Um, and, but I never really like, thought about it, I guess. Like I knew that I was, but I didn't really care because I was still what I thought was happy. And I still had boyfriends and I like went out and did stuff and everything. But deep down, I was really unhappy. And for me, and I talked about this on my Instagram the other day, um, I'm kind of, I'm really struggling right now with the mental change. Um, I look in the mirror and I do not see the girl that lost 140 pounds. I still see who I was before. I critique everything on my body from the stretch marks that were there before to the loose skin to just everything about me I'm not comfortable with now, which blows my mind. And I will be completely honest with you, my intimacy with my fiance is terrible. Like, I don't want to be intimate with him, which, again, blows my mind because at 268 pounds, I didn't care. At 135 pounds, I'm like, I don't want you to see me with my clothes off. So I that identity is really, like, resonating with me because I'm trying to find the new identity. I don't know what that new identity is. I don't. Like, I just don't know who that person is. And I'm two and a half years post-op. And it's kind of like, I'm at this place where I don't know, like, I don't know what's next. Like, okay, I've done it. Like, here we are. Now what? Like, I don't, I don't know what, what's next. So for me, creating that new identity is really like what I'm and like self love. Like I need to learn how to love myself and not really, I necessarily care what other people think, which my whole life that's all I've ever done is cared what other people thought of me and what, you know, even I'm getting married in October and I went wedding dress shopping. I'm two and a half years post off and I still went to the plus size section in the gown store. Still went to plus size. And the girl was like, what are you doing? Like you over here. And I'm like, what? Like there, it's actually gonna fit me. You're not gonna have to like clamp those things on me. Like that just, it still, it just blows my mind. And I guess for me, that, that identity thing is like, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to find that new identity. And two, even two and a half years out, I still don't know yet who, who I'm meant to be and what my life is going to consist of. So. And I think that's, a, that's a very scary place to, to be. Yeah. It's very, um, I, and I talk about this with Wendy all the time. I'm like you too. I struggle too. I'm like, oh, okay, so now what, now what, what's next? Yeah. And, uh, and what's, what was powerful for me is uh, in a conversation with Wendy, I, I just realized that part of my identity is a learner. And instead of asking, okay, what's next? I've started asking myself, what do I want to learn now? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that just gave me the, the horizon as my possibilities for life. And my identity is more than just one thing. My identity, my identity is a lot of different things that are you know, compiled into this, this physical body of mine. So it's okay that I don't have my complete identity defined or refined. But what's important is that I, I have permission to grow and learn and try and mm -hmm. that I can settle on pieces of my identity and work on one piece at a time. Because if I sat back and, look and said, okay, what is my identity? That's huge. There's so mm -hmm. much that goes into that. 
and it's okay to work on one one piece as I go because as we can see as in that change process I need a lot of skills to get to the action step and then I need a lot of skills for for maintenance so if I just tackle one little piece at a time as I go that's that's yeah. wonderful and I just I just know that if I if I stay stuck in the old identity that I had I'm going to go back that way because that's that was safe that's safe I know what that is but I don't want to go back there. I don't want to be that person that I was. I want to be a new person. So I'm constantly fighting the urge to go back and I'm constantly working on looking in a different direction, on refining, on trying, on, on focusing on this identity that, that I wanna be. Yeah, and you, you talked about you know constantly fighting that, that old, I mean, it, it happens every day you're fighting that because yeah. I go to the grocery store and what pulls me bread cookies ice cream all those things and I have to fight that every single time I go to the grocery store anytime I mean I'm going tonight to dinner at my in-laws they're Italian they eat pasta I don't eat pasta anymore because pasta was my struggle bread like pasta rice those were my go-to's and I chosen not to eat those things anymore that's my personal decisions but it's, I'm going to have to fight that tonight. Like his mom already told me like the dessert that she made. And I'm like, why are you telling me this? Like, it's a fight every day. And it's, they, a lot of people and like, especially my friends, because my friends have been skinny and it's kind of weird because I have lost all this weight. And now my friends have kind of gained weight. Like they're at that time in their life where they're like eating more and drinking and all those things and they're constantly like how do I do it what do I do and I'm like well you, you got to make the change yeah I mean and if you're not willing to make that change and to fight those challenges every day you're you will you'll fail you'll relapse and it's relapse is real I've seen it yeah so. we and see Lindsay, what you're describing is, is the perfect example of why two years, you, you have a 50% chance of relapsing. Um, I get it. I, I chose it's so hard. I, yeah, I chose to give up ice cream. I haven't had ice cream in 15 years. And the first, you know, first two years, I really noticed when other people around me were having ice cream. My, my husband loves ice cream. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would say, why do you eat that in front of me? That's, that's so cruel. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't his fault. I mean, he was, having ice cream and now like I got to five years and I don't even didn't even notice it anymore now I don't I don't notice it but it it took it took five years and, and I don't know the day when I quit noticing but it yeah. does take it does take a while and you described body dysthymic disorder perfectly that's where you go to the plus size section even when you even when you're down you know to obviously to everyone else a different size but it got us into the position we were in in the first place we didn't realize how big we were getting because we see ourselves as a certain size and it doesn't matter how much weight we lose or how much weight we gain in our minds that's the size we are and that's why i was shocked when i saw my picture holding my my grandniece it's like who is this person yeah it's my image of myself every picture Yep, it's it's crazy so that's called body dysthymic disorder most of us have it and most of us Weight loss surgery doesn't change it. Um, it's going back and rewiring our brain, and that's what that's what changes it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead to a couple slides because I just I I have a visual for what for the the work that that I have done to start to change my identity. So this is my handwriting. This is this is how I this is how my brain works. So. What James Clear says is there really there's there's two steps to, to changing your identity. I'll flip back here. Uh, that very first bullet. Step number one: decide the type of person you want to be. Your new identity. Then prove it to yourself with small wins. Simple. Two steps. What's my new identity? How how am I going to prove that I am living that identity? Sounds simple. It's a lot of work. Uh, so. You guys can see what I've done right here. So my big disappointment that I realized was that I would just be an automatically healthy person after surgery. That was my, that was my assumption. That was my crushing, one of my many crushing moments after weight loss surgery was like, oh shit, I'm not gonna be automatically healthy. 
I'm going to look, uh, I'm going to be lighter. That doesn't mean that I'm healthy. So I want to, my, part of my identity is I want to be a healthy person. That's, that's the identity that I'm working towards. So there's four big areas for me, nutrition, sleep, activity, mental strength. If I would, if I was doing those four things, I would be living my life as a healthy person. That this was just what I brainstormed. Well, what does it actually mean to, to get in my nutrition? Well, I'd have to track my food. I would have to get in my macros and my water. I'd have to prepare my meals. I would have to always have a water jug around me. I'd have to take my daily vitamins. Uh, I, I, would, I would have to make that a habit. So I really broke down those steps for each of these areas. And when I looked at this list, I went, oh my God, that's a lot of freaking work. And instead of getting overwhelmed, I stopped myself and I just said, okay, I'm only focusing on one of these areas at a time. So I decided to start with nutrition. So if, I'm, if, I, if my identity is a healthy person, I'm going to eat nutritiously. So I recommitted to Weight Watchers. I track my food now using the app. I track my macros. I track my water. I keep my beverages with me at all times. I take my daily vitamins and I track, right? You guys have maybe seen this on, on my Instagram page. This is a system that works well for me. But every time I check off one of those boxes and I'll show you April, I was so happy. And even my husband was really impressed because, right? Look at all those boxes that I checked off in April. All of these boxes are evidence that I am living my healthy identity. So the more boxes that I check off, the more enthused I am, the more excited I am about keeping up my, keeping up my habit. I can't focus on all of these at, at the same time. I have a, more than a full-time job. I'm a dean of students. I, I manage 40 staff members. I've got a school with 1,600 kiddos, right? I, I, I run these groups. I'm doing all these things. I don't have time to do all of these at once, but I do have time to tackle them. And this is where Wendy's stair step of change really clicked in my brain for me, right? Because once I figured out my recipe for nutrition, now I need to maintain that. Well, once I get to a point where tracking my food and getting in my macros and getting in my vitamins is pretty automatic, right? I can look back at my evidence and I can say, you know, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing pretty good there. Maybe I am maintaining. So now I can move on to my next item. Now I can move on to sleep. So I'm still going to continue to do all of my nutritional elements, right? Because I really want those to become habits. I want this to be my new mental pathway. I want this to become myelinized. I want my brain to automate my nutrition. Now I'm going to move on to sleep. So I'm still going to do my nutrition and I'm going to add in my sleep. And I'm going to go through those exact same steps. This might freaking take me my lifetime. I don't know. But... If I can continue to do this, if I can continue to produce evidence that I am living my identity, I have done it. And then I truly am living that identity. So not only will the outside people go, no, there's ev I see evidence that April is a healthy person. I have the evidence internally that I am a healthy person. So no longer is my true identity and my perceived identity different. They're actually gonna be the same for the first time ever. And that's gonna be amazing because that means that I don't have, I'm not doing this extra work to fake people out anymore. I just get to live my life. It's, it's just amazing. It's, it's very powerful for me, right? So these are kind of my steps for, these are the steps that I'm following to create my new identity. I'm defining my new identity. I've done it there. This is who I want to be after weight loss surgery. This is what it's going to take for me to be successful after weight loss surgery. What evidence would that person have to show, right? So what's, what's my evidence? Well, nutrition, sleep, activity, and, and mental strength. What things would I need to do daily to do those? Well, you guys can see them right there. And then I just have to plan, execute, and track. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Monumental task. But this is what I have to do to not relapse. And I think this is what most people have to do to not relapse. But this is a crap ton of work. This is why people relapse. This is why you have a 50% chance. 
I'm going to go back a slide and just um, uh, showcase. So this is this is just based on James Clear. I just took this straight from the Atomic Habits book, right? Two easy steps. Decide your new identity. Prove it to, to yourself with small wins. The best line from the book is that second bullet. He says, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. And then the thing that just blew my mind, right? He, he said, this is similar to an election. You do not need unanimous votes to win. You just need a majority. Oh my God. So you're telling me that some days if I don't get in my water or some days I don't take my vitamins, that's okay. If I can look back at my tracker and I've done it a majority of the time, I have won. So powerful, so powerful. That space and grace, that's been my mantra, right? I have to give myself some space to figure this out and I need to give myself a little grace when I don't hit the mark every single time. And that's okay, because I do not need a unanimous decision. I just need a majority, right? And th these new identities that we're, that we're trying to form, they require new evidence. They just do. I can say that I'm being this healthy person all that I want, but if I have no evidence to back that up, that's just total bullshit. So I have to have the evidence, right? And he says the most practical way to change who we are is to change what we do. So simple, but yet the, the, the monumental work of our life. I made this, this is just a graphic that you guys are welcome to have and use. And I hope you guys notice it's just exactly this, right? What's my new identity? The big kind of thinking bubble. What, what are the big things? What does that mean? And then what does it look like every day? And then just a space for you to think about how am I going to track the evidence? How am I going to track the wins? This is just how my brain works. Your brain might not work like this. We're all gonna have different ways of thinking, thinking this through. I just wanted to provide something for you if that would be of service to you. But I am so excited to see uh, what you guys do or, or how, how you go about this work. Because uh, by us sharing, we're, we're just gonna learn from each other. So what do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Where are you at? I think that makes a lot of sense like looking at it from the pre-op kind of stage I'm like all right like I've started to like I had my consultation last Tuesday and I was like that's it like that's my cutoff like that's like I'm gonna get my shit back together like because before I did keto and I lost like 60 pounds and then I gained it back and then plus some and so I like it's just like mind-blowing that like like I think her name was Lindsay said like you just kind of let yourself go um or maybe it was kelly never mind whatever um but like that makes a lot of sense like and i've always like kind of like said like oh i'm gonna do a bullet journal like i'm gonna do that and like i've never really like gotten down to do one but like seeing how like you did it and like how like that's like your kind of like way to stay like on track of it like it kind of it, like it just makes sense in the the little diagram that you did that makes a lot of sense too like it's probably something that I should do <laughs> and I think I think for a long time I avoided it as well because I knew it was a lot of work and I just didn't want to admit that I needed to start right. from scratch right I just I, I just no 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 uh, but you know, like what I said earlier, you just have to just look at what, look at the people who are truly being successful. So not the people that we see on Instagram that are maybe showing us one thing and not the other, but the people who are actually doing the work or people in your community, people in your life who are being successful, what are they doing? What resonates with you? Make your own recipe and just try, 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 try until something sticks. That's, I think, the, 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 the biggest thing. We can't be afraid to, to try different things. And I think I did the same thing too. I lost 60 something pounds following 30, 10 weight loss for life. But I got to a low weight. I was so frustrated with how I was doing it. It wasn't healthy. And I just thought, I don't know how to do this the rest of my life. I can't maintain this. I don't know how to live at this low weight. So then well, I'm done then. I don't, I don't know. And I don't have the capacity. I don't have the energy or the space to figure it out. 
So I'm just going back to what I know because this is too scary. This is too much work. I don't know how to do any of this. It's just, it's too much. And I think my, my working theory is that the tool of weight loss surgery gives us that extra motivation, gives us that extra power to finally dive into this. Because all of a sudden for me, 90% of my brain is now freed up to think about other things, right? I'm not thinking about food 90% of the time. So I've got all of this space mentally to tackle this. And I have the energy to tackle this. Whereas before I didn't have the energy. I was exhausted from the work that I was doing in my life. I was exhausted from battling food. I was exhausted from battling my addiction. This is the last thing I had to, I had time and space to dedicate to. But after surgery, holy crap, I've got, I've got a ton of space up here. And I have people in my life that are giving me these tools and these, these ideas. I have, the, I have the tools, I have my hardcore tool, I've got my, I've got my ding that, hey, you're full, stop eating, you don't need anything more, I've got my list. You've got all these tools, you just have to bring them together. Any other thoughts? April, I just wanted to say that um, it really, I love that you use the word tool because <laughs> I feel like not a lot of people use that word enough. And a lot of my friends just thought that, oh, you had your stomach cut out, so you can just eat whatever you want. Well, that's not the case. Like, it is a tool that I have to use. And if I don't use it properly, I'm not going to lose weight. Correct. And so I'm just, I, whenever, the first time I heard you say, I have this tool, I was like, this girl she knows what she's talking about because this nobody else uses that and they're just like oh my gosh I had this surgery and now I'm skinny and I'm like no you, you have a tool like it's not this isn't a fix-all end-all solution like you you still have to put the work in and I still tell people like I I don't really like using the word diet because diets are diets and we've all done them and they're horrible and not all of them are horrible but in it is not the word that I like to use, but I am still kind of on like a limited thing. Like it's just not, it's a tool. And I'm so glad that you use that word because it, it just, that's the word. That is the word of this game tool. It is tool that you have to choose to use if you want to use it properly. Yep. And the, 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 the two things that I've really learned about my tool is that, um, it, the, the tool works on the physical side of, of my, my food issue, right? Mm -hmm. I get a signal real quick that I'm, that I'm full and I don't need to eat anymore. The tool is not for my brain. The tool was for my stomach. So yep. I can't use this tool on my brain because that's not what it's, it's made for, right? I can't build a house with a swimming board, right? With swim goggles. Yep. Not the right tool for that. But I can use this tool to power the tools that I need for this, right? I can take care of this with this tool. Awesome, thank God. Now I need another tool or lots of tools to work on this, this part of it. And it's okay to acknowledge that. The, the reason that I had surgery was because I reached out to a friend who was posting pictures of herself. She looked very different on Instagram and I messaged her and I was like, bitch, I need what you're doing because you look amazing. And she was like, oh, I had weight loss surgery. And I was like, oh, hell no. Weight loss surgery is for like my 600 pound life people. Weight loss surgery is not for women like you and I, like what the hell did you do? And in my conversation with her, she just point blank told me, she's like, okay, uh, if you had a heart condition, you would not utilize a medical tool to fix that. If you had diabetes, you wouldn't use the tool of insulin to address that. If you needed a new knee, you wouldn't get that tool. She was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Weight loss surgery is a tool that we have to use to live our healthiest life. And for other people or society to shame you for using a medical tool that has been provided for you by the science gods is asinine. You're being stupid. And I was like, oh, when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. That and makes the, a lot of sense. The word, the word shame too is like another thing that I, you know, I was, it's taken me two and a half years to actually like make this Instagram because I felt, I got a lot of shame. I didn't even tell my dad that I was having this procedure done till two weeks pre-op because 
my dad's theory was that if I ate salads and ran five miles every day, I was going to lose weight, which was not the case. I was a very active teenager. I said that on my Instagram. I played field hockey. I ran. I did all kinds of stuff. I just never could lose weight. I would lose maybe 10 pounds, and then it would be right back plus some. So the shame that I thought that I was going to have and receive from people that I took the easy way out, which is not easy, um, was, it was a fear of mine. And when I finally got the current, like I had a personal Instagram and I still really didn't post a lot of things on there about my weight loss journey or on my Facebook, because being 26, I just felt like people were going to be like this young girl, there she did. She went, she had this surgery. Now she's all skinny. And just like the shame that I thought I was going to get from people but that's been the complete opposite. I mean, the people that I've seen all over the United States and not even just in the United States that have had this same thing done and this, they're in this same journey. I'm just like amazed. So I'm so glad you brought up the shame thing because I really thought that's what I was going to experience. And it's been the total opposite. Correct. And I think, I think too, a lot of times we, 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 we think we were anticipating, right? We, we really play that up in our brain, but really mm-hmm. that's just a tool that our addiction is using to keep us from making changes, right? It's a tool that we are using to, to really stop us from, from, from moving forward in our life because it's scary and because we, we don't want to fail, right? There's, mm-hmm. there's all, I mean, a billion reasons for that. Uh, but I think just recognizing all of these things that we've done in our life to prevent us from moving forward and just being done with them, just dropping them where, where we currently are and just leave them behind. Don't look back, just drop them off. It's dead weight. It's serving. It's not serving us at all. And that's why I think that it's so important that we focus on our identity, right? That we start with our identity, because if we do that, then quickly all of these other outlying things that have kept us from moving forward, I think really kind of become crystal clear in terms of why we've held on to them. And we quickly realize that does not align to this new identity that I'm trying to create, right? There is no shame in being a healthy person. So that can go away, right? Because it just doesn't align. So it can be a really powerful tool that we can use to not only rid ourselves of this baggage, but it's a powerful tool to help us move forward in the direction that we want to move forward in. Absolutely. Sarah and Annie, I know you guys have to go. Thank you for joining us. They might've already popped out. They, they left a nice little uh, thing in the, in the chat. Does anybody else have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, wonderings? I think it's very, very important to hang on to um, faith the faith I have and um, religious wise has helped me greatly because um, it's all helped me in the past on other changes I made in my life. I have hung on to things that I've loved where it's been, whether it's cartoons, art, you know, a lot of the stuff that originally are a part of me that I love. So hanging on to those have definitely helped me in this transition because I'm not completely discarding all of me. I'm hanging on to the stuff that will be my strength. So that helps me stay balanced this far. And I know that I'll have some work to do, but hanging on to these parts of me will definitely help me get there. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, and I think I've said it, I, I've, I've said it, I think multiple times today, and I've mentioned it a couple of times on posts that I've made the, the our core, our seed, that, that, that smallest internal piece of us, if that is our true self, that does not change, nor should it change. Right. But the shell that surrounds that has to change, I think, to, 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 to live a different life because before that shell was, was helping us live our old life. And that shell is not the shell that we need to live our new life. We really have to discard it and we have to create ourselves a, a, a new pathway forward because that, that, that our old ways of doing things is how we lived our old life. It's how we lived our old weight. It's how we lived our old identity. And that can't be who we are because if we keep living that, we're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to that old way of living, that old identity. Yeah. And, um, 
I'm not sure who it was who just brought up about like holding on to the things that you um, like you care about and that are your strengths. That was something that I had to remind myself um, was I'm very close with my grandmother and she was like, but you're going to change. And I was like, no, I'm not like, I'm still Lindsay. I'm still your granddaughter. I, I'm still the teacher, the daughter, the granddaughter, the friend, like that's not going to change. I'm just going to lose weight and get healthier. And those little things, like I've had to remind myself that I still am, I'm still that healthcare professional. I'm still that person that, does all those things I'm just a healthier version yep and I think we can we can all identify those pieces of ourselves that are our true selves right when mm -hmm. we strip everything away when we strip away what we're trying to show people right the, the fake it till you make it stuff we can all get down to we can we can all get down to to the real us and sometimes there are pieces of me that I'm not thrilled that that are the real me I talk Wendy and I talk about this often there are things that you know, I don't necessarily like, but I know that they're the real me. So I need to learn to maybe not embrace them, but I need to learn to acknowledge them. And then if it's, if I'm truly not happy with it, I can change my identity. I, I can become the person that I want to become, or I can incorporate those pieces of me that are maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but I know that they're truly me. That's the power of this. Nobody's going to tell you, nobody's going to tell you how to do this, but I can yeah. tell you if you do not, have the honest conversation with yourself. If you are not honest with yourself, then all, none of this is gonna work. It's just not. We have to get to the point where we are finally truthful with ourself. If we're building our, this new identity on a bunch of bullshit lies, we're, we're gonna get ourselves right back to the place that we were before. We're doing exactly what we have done in our past. And that can be really difficult. It was really difficult for me. Like I said, my entire life was built on a fake identity, on pushing out a fake identity. So that was real difficult for me because I don't really know what my true identity is. I've worked so hard to fake it that I've lost sight of who I really am as a person. And that's been work that Wendy and I have done. And it's, it's brutal, uh, but it is necessary. It's required. Can I say one thing about that? Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times, and uh, the bariatric population is famous for this, and this is one reason I like us so much, is we really are others focused. We serve other people, we take care of other people, we put their needs ahead of ours, and that's why uh, when we prepare and have surgery, it's, it's extraordinary because all of a sudden we're putting ourselves and our needs first. And one of the reasons we go off the wagon is because we quit doing that at some point. We start taking care of other people before we take care of ourselves. But it's because, well, it's because we're nice people, but it's also because we really do care about what other people think. And we become so outside ourselves focused that inside ourselves, who we, who we are and, and what we think about ourselves doesn't make as much um, difference to us as what others think of us. So as we start creating our identity, it is important. Like I like what Diana had to say, if you've, if you've got a, if you've got something about yourself that you really love and you really know that, and, and you're really acquainted with it, keep it. Certainly you're not going to throw everything about yourself out. You're going to start with what you know and love and, and use that as your basis, use that as your inside circle and, and then just expand, but it's important. It's actually more important to, to um, get your positive reinforcement about yourself rather than from other people. Because if you feel good about yourself, nobody can take that away from you. If other people are having a bad day and they're going to grump at you, then it's really easy to personalize that and have a bad day yourself. Agreed. So hey, everyone, just real quick, I have to jump off because I have to get to dinner, but thank you guys so much for everything today. And this has really been a true experience that I'm glad that I'm a part of. Um, I hope to get back on these virtual meetings. This is, this is really great. And I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Very much appreciate that. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So maybe instead of ref reflecting, I would ask you to maybe take a screenshot of this quickly on, on your phones. Um,
my my goal for all of us or my my homework is if you will uh for all of us is to kind of go go through these questions and really spend some time dedicated time reflecting and and answering these questions for ourselves right what what was what was my old public identity uh, how did that differ from my true identity or did it differ uh what do i want my new identity to be Will this new identity help me find success after weight loss surgery? What evidence uh, would you have to create or prove that you were living this new identity? What things or steps would you have to take to support your new identity? So really thinking backwards, starting with the end in mind. What, what are those big things and what would I have to do every day to prove to myself and to others to, that I'm living that identity? What evidence do, what I, do I have? Um, and then how am I going to track those votes for my new identity? Just think about it. This is, uh, Wendy, what stage would this be? Contem contemplation? It, it would be preparation or contemplation. Well, it, it could certainly be preparation. It depends on how you use it. <laughs> Perfect. So I think these are really great questions to kind of launch you into a deeper study. Uh, a deeper question and answer period for yourself and really gets you on the path to action and to trying out those new recipes uh, and leading, leading to something that you can start to um, maintain in, in, our, in our lives. So that's my, that's my, my challenge, my homework for, for us all. And if you guys, of course, know that graphic is there for you to use, steal, borrow. I don't, I don't care. If you want a PDF version, send me a, a message in, uh, on Instagram and I will send it to you so you can download it. Uh, if you make your own graphic or whatever you end up creating for yourself, I would love to see. I would love to kind of be a part of your journey. If you feel comfortable, please share it. Um, we, we're, we're just excited to... Uh, you know, to, to, to partner and support in, in any way that, that we can. So here are the resources for today. Atomic Habits is uh, the book that I basically keep on my nightstand 24 seven because I reference it so much. Uh, the Willpower Instinct is the very next book that Wendy recommended that I dive into and I'm almost done with the Water Dancers. And when I'm done with the Water Dancers, I'm moving on to the Willpower Instinct. And I can't thank Wendy enough. She is, as you guys can see, just a modern day sage when it comes to all bariatric oh, I wish. things. <laughs> I like that term, yeah. Uh, well, you certainly are in my book. So there's, yeah. her, there's her website. And she has so graciously made available to us some free resources. Uh, so here is her homepage. Can you guys see this? Can you see her homepage? Okay, perfect. So if you just go to wendyrawlings.com, this is her homepage. If you click on bariatric success group, which she hosts, uh, I'm assuming kind of something similar to this for her current clients. If you scroll down to the bottom under this section, a healthier you, you're going to find two fantastic resources that are, that are related to what we talked about today. So uh, this, this piece of information is just really about what we talked about, how we have to create these new pathways in our brain if we wanna be successful. The old pathways will only get us into trouble. We need to come up with these new pathways. So she's got a great graphic. Uh, she has steps to how we can rewire this, this new destination to create these new pathways. Fantastic uh, piece of information that she has made available to us uh, for free on her website. Uh, the other piece that she's made available to us is what we use today, this change process. So again, the, the graphic, uh, a little bit of background information on it, and then some fantastic questions that we can use uh, as we move through this, this change process ourselves. So I absolutely recommend that you uh, utilize the resources that she has made available to us. Uh, Wendy also just became a licensed uh, national, national distance counselor. So if you are feeling that she might be a really great person that you would like to utilize in a professional uh, way. I, of course, uh, I can't recommend her, her more. She is a phenomenal resource. And I've, Wendy and I have been seeing each other for get, coming close to a year. And the, 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 the learning and the growth that, I, that she and I do together virtually is the same that happened in person. So there's definitely not a, you're, you're, you're not getting anything less for, for your dollar meeting her virtually. So I absolutely recommend that, um, 
that, that you take advantage of our services if that's something that you're that you're thinking that you might need. Did I miss anything, Wendy? Is there anything else you'd like oh, to add? I, I was just thinking I should hire you for my PR. <laughs> I'd be ha happy to, happy to. So fantastic resources that I, that I highly recommend uh, that, that we all utilize. And just so you guys know, I mean, this book, it's a bestseller. It's available at all the libraries. So if you, you absolutely can check it out. But I tend to, um, you know, use these books as a textbook. So I'm always a fan of, you know, buying it so that you can make it your own. Uh, just, yeah. Uh, awesome, awesome book. And then the other resource I want to share with you guys that Jason and I are super, of course, pumped about. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. He and I started a podcast and we are thrilled with uh, the results so far. Wendy, I don't even know if you know this, but we've, we, we're have we getting close to um, over 100 downloads between Apple Podcast and, and BuzzFeed. And we already have our first five-star review, which is just- well done amazing oh guys way to go yeah wendy was our second guest uh it's it's awesome it's it's definitely a jason and i are rookies it's me doing this and jason doing what he's doing but we we try to have some really meaningful conversations about what we are experiencing and, and what would be helpful for the bariatric community so um you can there's a link to it in our bios and instagram it's now on the apple podcast which we are so excited about so all you need to do is search east to west underscore weight loss surgery and you will see this logo pop up and that is the podcast so our goal is to record one every monday uh for the foreseeable future and we're just going to kind of see uh what the what the demand is for, for that type of information, but we're hoping it's, uh, we're hoping it's a good thing. So if you have not listened, absolutely give it a listen. If that is podcasting is your thing. And if you did enjoy it, please subscribe. And we would love reviews as well. That, that always helps. Jason, did yeah. I miss anything? No, I don't think so. I think uh, you pretty much covered it all. The reviews are just going to help us get better and, and kind of help fine tune the content. Uh, we try to do the best we can with getting the information out just that April and I kind of talk about and Wendy was a fantastic guest so we tapped into a lot of great information from her. Uh, couldn't have gone any better in my opinion for those. But we are looking for, you know, we're always looking for the next idea for different show ideas. And if you guys have questions, if you guys have anything that you're thinking of that, that you didn't get in on today or any other of the, you know, virtual meetups that we have, shoot us, you know, shoot us messages, shoot us uh, either direct messages to April herself or to my, myself or to the East to West page, whichever works for you. Um, you know, we have no issue bringing stuff up, trying to find a way to, to, to work it into the show because these, the, the whole reason we started this was to answer questions that you guys feel like you can't get the answers to because while the community is a large community of people that have had the surgery and like-minded or people that are about to have the surgery in Rebecca's case, we have a lot of, it, it's just kind of, the resources are there, but they're everywhere we kind of started this whole thing to kind of narrow it down and get everything in one grouped area where you feel like we can answer just as many questions for you or be there to support you in your journey because we've all been there. We've all taken that first step. We've all been to that first meeting with the doctor and we're all where we are now. So while it might not be a question that I myself can answer, April may be able to get to it or we also have Wendy as an amazing resource. So. These are things that, you know, as, as far as the community goes, we wanted to try to really help push and grow the community. So, you know, the podcast and these meetings and these things like this and the page that we started on Instagram is just kind of that place where we can all feel safe, come together, ask the questions that we really want to know the answers to and to help each other just generally because the biggest thing for us is to root every one of you guys on just like we put, just like we invested in ourselves. We want to invest in you guys as well because none of us are going to make it through this without support of, of somebody. So we just want to be there for each and every one of you guys to try to help as best we can. 
Yep, and our tagline is we're, we're supporting the bariatric community with humor, humility, and honesty. We, we, we have to laugh uh, every now and then. We also have to recognize that we are not the experts, but we do know some experts and we're gonna call on them to, to, to provide us their expert knowledge in areas that we don't know. And honesty just comes with Jason and I and everybody in the community being honest about our experiences, uh, answering everybody's questions honestly and truthfully so that there's just no smoke and mirrors. But the whole point is, we want to destigmatize weight loss surgery. We want to get people who have had the surgery and have been too afraid to share it. We want to get their stories out. And who knows, maybe we can make a dent. Maybe if more people uh, become aware of the, the, the mental hurdles and the mental changes that you have to go through, perhaps that relapse number could, could even decrease a little bit with just more conversations like this. So we're, we're just, we're, we're in it for the community. We're, we're in it to, to make our journeys uh, more successful. That's that's really just what it comes down to. So as always, I like to leave us with a uh, a quote, an uplifting message. So of course, from Mr. James Clear, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. That can be really powerful when we're staring at a pint of ice cream or when we are staring at a cocktail. Right? Is eating that? Is drinking that? Is doing that going to uh, cast a vote for the person who I want to be? This has really been helpful for me. I'm struggling with being more active, but every time I'm active, that is a vote for me being a healthy person. And if I can think of it that way, that for some reason makes it easier for me. So, so there you go. I'm gonna be posting this on my uh, Instagram page Monday. So you can definitely snag it, print it out, take it with you wherever you need to go. Uh, sometimes we just all need a little, a little touchdown to go back to when we're, when we're struggling. So as always, we wrap up these uh, events just by asking for your feedback. I want to make sure, are you guys leaving today with what you were hoping to leave with? Yes. I just um, have been thinking about this journey and I have found that it's very, very important for me to not um, get up on a soapbox and I would call preach a lot of stuff to people like, you know, you should do this or that because I found myself that I was kind of starting to do that. And I thought, whoa, 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 back off. Well, so that's, you're just, you're just recognizing your humility. That's nothing wrong with that. All right. So, and everybody else got something out of it, I'm hoping. Oh, definitely. Yep. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So if the format works for everybody, this one definitely went longer. I think this has been the longest one that we've ever done, but there was a lot of stuff here to talk about. So I do apologize again. Uh, would you guys join again in the future when we do our next one? Definitely. Awesome, perfect. Uh, we've talked about this before, you know, is, is this the best format? And uh, I think with everything else we have going on, just keep it on Instagram is great. If you guys know other people who are in the community who you think would benefit from them, please spread the word. Whenever you see us uh, share our graphics, please share them with your friends and your followers. We really want to, to grow this community. Uh, so if you guys have any topics or ideas that you want to talk about the next time that we meet, please let us know now. So if you know that there's something right now that you, that you wanna see addressed, let me know. Um, or send me a message uh, or send Jason a message or send us a message to East to West so we can kind of start uh, planning on that. And if any of you are interested in leading a part of the conversation, please also let me know. Uh, you are probably an expert in an area that I am not. So I definitely, uh, it's not my goal to dominate the conversation. I just have a skill when it comes to putting these types of things together because I do this as my job. Uh, but if there's something that you would like to lead, if there's something that you would like to discuss, please let me know. And that, that is going to be uh, your, your platform to, to do so. Uh, and then I think our next meeting will be Sunday, June 14th. I know that sounds far away, but we have Mother's Day. We have Memorial Day. I've got a getaway plan that hopefully will still happen. There's Father's Day and graduations and all kinds of crazy stuff. So um, I just thought June 14th would, would maybe be the next day. That might flex because now that I'm looking at it, that might be some graduations. Uh, so maybe late in May or... Yeah, or June 14th, but that's kind of what we're looking at. And I think just what we used to do these like every week, and then we kind of gone to every other week. Now that we're doing the podcast, that's taking a little bit more time. I just think maybe, maybe doing this once a month would be a, would be a, a better frequency for us. So, but we're always open to suggestions. So if you think every other week or, uh, you know, twice a month would be more beneficial, you just let us know. 
Well, we're always open for questions as well. So if you if you come up against something that, that can't wait till the till the meetup, you let us know and we'll be more than happy to work through whatever we need to work through with you. We'll take the time uh, because, you know, that's like like we had said before, that's the whole reason we started this. So yes. if time, if t- if time and, and answers and questions and discussions are what you need, then we're more than happy to take that time to do that. Yes, absolutely. If you have a question, somebody else has it too. So definitely let us know what that question is uh, so that we can work through it. And then we can even, you know, get, get, get our suggestions or get the answer out to the community for everybody else to benefit too from as well. So yeah, thank you, Jason. Super awesome. All right, you guys, that's, that definitely wraps us up for today. If there isn't anything else for the good of the order, we will say goodbye. But again, thank you everybody who joined us today. We know this one went long, but we hope that you got something of value out of it. That, that's the whole goal. Thank you all. It was nice to have met you and see your faces or, or not, but congratulations and good luck on your journey. Awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Bye, yeah. and thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you Bye-bye. so much, you guys. Have a good weekend. You too. You too. Bye. Bye.